Hello my dear students and welcome back to Excellence Batch and I am your Diksha ma'am. So here we are going to start with another chapter of biotechnology and that is biotechnology and its application. In the previous lecture, the biotechnology principle and processes, we have discussed that how biotechnology is done, what is biotechnology, what's the theory behind all the processes you do, how you do the processes, how technically everything is done, right, and what you are doing in it. Now it's time to see where these techniques, they are actually applied in the life sciences or in your daily life. Fine. So let's talk about them. So the application of biotechnology includes therapeutics, diagnostic, genetically modified crops for agriculture, processed food, bioremediation, waste treatment and energy production. What does it mean? First of all, the first application in therapeutics. What are therapeutics? Therapeutics are all those drug-like substances which are actually not exactly a drug. It's basically all those components that are basically the part of your body but you are producing them artificially. For example, if a person is suffering from diabetes and the person need to have insulin, so we will produce insulin in a bacteria. So that insulin is a therapeutic. When you will give it, the person will get recovered, right? So that's a therapeutic and that you make with the help of biotechnology. So we'll be discussing about that in this chapter. Diagnostic, that how can you diagnose a disease? For example, nowadays when there was a lot of COVID, so people used to uh, undergo diagnosis and they undergo tests sometimes like RT-PCR. So they are also the gifts of biotechnology. So by that you can detect what kind of a disease it is. Genetically modified crops for agriculture, that how we have uh, modified our crops in agriculture, in the field of agriculture, so that the crops can become a better variety, they can be a high yielding variety. Another application is processed food, so so many food you are eating nowadays, let's take an example your favorite cheese. So you eat cheese every day, right, some people, <laughs> so that is also a kind of biotechnology or you, you eat yogurt, that's also a gift of biotechnology. Bioremediation, that how can you use the biological substances to, uh, you know, reduce the pollution like oil spills were there and we have used some bacteria, we have used one Pseudomonas putida that can, uh, you know, pro, uh, that can uh, eat all the oil and oil spills, whatever the uh, oil was spilled there in the ocean, that can be replenished, right? Then waste treatment, in the waste treatment plant also, you will study in the botany that how the bacteria are used to treat the dirty water and to make it clean, right? Then energy production, yes, we also use a lot of organisms for producing energy like methane, uh, like methane treatment, like gas plants, they are installed and there also bacteria are used. So these two you will be studying in the, you will be studying in the botany, rest I will be taking part here in the biotechnology, right? So we will start with the three critical research areas of biotechnology. So far we have discussed that how biotechnology is a boom and how you do the stuff and so. But still there are certain research area that need to be taken care of that needs or some areas of biotechnology where we need a lot of research. The first is providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism, usually a microbe or pure enzyme. That now we are, best catalyst means a catalyst can be an enzyme, this can be an organism also. So what kind of organism you are using? If that organism is pretty good, for example, I am using a bacteria E. coli. If that E. coli is reproducing at a faster rate, and producing a lot of colonies then it can give you product at a faster rate and the product can be more right another thing if that E. coli is good with the gene that you are adding it, it can easily take up the gene the transformation is very easy then that bacteria is best for you to do your experiments and to produce your product so best catalyst is very important we still don't have a lot of bacteria on which we can do the experiments on which we can apply biotechnology to which we can give the gene and let them grow and uh, they produce your product. So this is the first research area. Let's find out what are the best enzymes, what are the best microbes that can work for you. Second is creating optimal condition through engineering for a catalyst to act. All right, so now I have researched, right, and I found out there is a bacterium better than E. coli that can produce better colonies, that can produce a better product that has high copy number. Okay, so now 
I need to know what can be the best condition. Under that condition, the bacteria can show is maximum growth. The condition is not just single, it can be many condition, pressure, temperature, right, what are the food they need, all these humidity and everything, all these conditions need to be researched along with the microorganism if you want your organism to grow at a faster rate, fine. Okay, so first let's find the organism, second research area, let's find the condition in which it can grow. Third is downstream processing technology to purify the protein or organic compound. Once the, you have find out the bacterium, imagine you have find out the bacterium. Now bacterium is producing colonies and we also have optimum conditions. We have find out, we have cracked the code that yes, this bacteria is the best and these are the condition in which it grows best. Now it has produced your product, okay. But this bacteria is present in a culture broth. This is how you grow the bacteria. Now in that culture broth, you have to identify your product, you have to take it out, you have to isolate the product and there comes the downstream processing. Still we can produce a lot of product but we don't know how to isolate them. So this is the another challenge in biotechnology that we don't have a lot of techniques to isolate the products in the pure form. So that's the third research area. So if these three, three codes, they are cracked, the, they can be more boom in the biotechnology. So moving further, today we'll be discussing about biotechnological application in agriculture because that's very important for us. Yes, in agriculture, food production, what's the basic a problem nowadays. The problem nowadays is that the population is increasing. Population is increasing. Due to increase in population, there is increase in food demand. If people are reproduced right if the people are reproducing they are giving birth to new individual if some people are added in the population they will be needing food for their survival so we say so we say if the people are increasing in number population is increasing there definitely will be increase in food demand right another point to discuss here so if people are eating, uh, if, so if the people are increasing and there is an in, uh, increase in food demand, then definitely we need to produce certain crops that are very high yielding that can uh, give you more variety, you know, or we can say they can give you uh, the crops or they can give you the food in a less time than comparison to the other, right? So this was a problem, but how can you increase the food demand? All right, oh, sorry, <laughs> food supply. How can you increase the food supply? So to increase the food supply, what we need to use? We need to use high yielding plant, high yielding plants or crops. Now what are the techniques that you can use to grow these plants so that you can have high uh, supply of the food? Okay, so what can be the techniques or options that we can use? The first option is agrochemical based agriculture. That means we can use a lot of chemicals, pesticides, insecticides and uh, fertilizers by which your fertility of the soil will be maintained and we'll be using insecticide, pesticide to kill all those insects that are destroying your plants. And by that the uh, yield of a plant can be increased. Fine, the first option is this, agrochemical based that means use of chemicals. Which chemicals are we using here? We are using fertilizers. We are using, yes, pesticides or insecticides. The second option can be if you don't want to use a lot of chemicals as chemicals are harmful, then you can go for organic farming. Then you can go for organic farming. 
what is organic farming in organic farming we use the pesticide we use the fertilizers but these are basically manures and pesticides are bio pesticide that means everything is natural eco friendly and plant plant based so here what we do we use bio pesticide we don't use chemicals we use manure no chemicals are used everything is eco friendly but still organic farming is not it, it has not grown so far that it can feed the entire population that's why we are still dependent upon the agrochemicals so the shifting from agrochemical to organic farming will take a little time right next is gmo what is gmo genetically modified organism the third option can be you can use some type of uh, crops you can use some type of crops that are genetically modified by biotechnology which is made best for particular type of a soil particular type of environment and so right so these three techniques are the options that can be used if you want to increase the food supply or you want the high yielding plants or you want high yield in your plants okay or in your crops so that's the three option now let's talk about how did green revolution turn into a success so green revolution came in 20th century and with this green revolution it triples the food supply so that's a big thing now what were the techniques used by the green revolution you must have heard of green revolution in botany what were the techniques that were used by green revolution that leads to so much success of it, it that it has uh, uh, basically uh, fed a lot of people right how so what were the techniques the uh, uh, that green revolution has used what were the techniques the first thing they used was a lot of agrochemicals they used fertilizers they used pesticides and that's how we are using it nowadays second thing there were proper management skills there were proper management skills that means they the farmers were taught that if this is a plant this plant needs this amount of water this is a time to water the plant this is not the time to water the plant and this is how you uh, saw them and everything so proper skills like irrigation and all they were kept in mind and this was how they show the great yield third is the type of plant the type of crop the crop used were modified they were modified high yielding because they were high yielding that's why they were able to cope up and uh, they were uh, able to you know multiply faster and give you the uh, amount of food all right now these techniques these techniques they were used and as a result the green revolution was a success but still it has a lot of drawbacks it has some hindrances now what are the hindrances maybe one hindrance you have already guessed that agrochemicals the chemicals are not good for our environment they become a part of your food chain and some chemicals are so harmful that they are the cause of breast cancers in the female so because chemicals are harmful they are a big no another point to note here is that chemicals apart from harmful they are very expensive the farmers who don't have a lot of land and they are poor they cannot afford them and uh, hence how can we how can they grow amount of the food right another thing is that these plants that were used they were only capable to grow in certain subcontinents uh, like in mexico and india they they show a lot of high yield but in other continents if you go to the america canada and very colder places these plants they were not a success so the plants can only grow can only grow in some continents only in some continents only so if this is not working now what's the only option that is left the only option that is left behind is genetically modified organisms what are gmos 
GMOs are genetically modified organisms. Now these organisms which are genetically modified, how are they modified? They can be modified by two ways. Either in that organism you add a gene. So you can modify any organism, you can modify any organism by adding a new gene to it, right? Or you can also modify it by subtracting any gene, which is gene subtraction, which is gene subtraction, fine. So gene addition and gene subtraction are two ways by which you can modify any organism genetically. In gene addition, we add a gene, a new gene is added. A new gene is added. For example, if any plant have less nutrition value, you can add any gene that can add up to the nutrition, right? For example, you can add a vitamin A gene, hence plant will be rich in vitamin A, right? In gene, subst in gene subtraction, we remove a gene or silent a gene. For example, a gene is not good and it is uh, causing damage to the plant, you can basically remove that gene. Or there is a protein that is damaging the plant. What you can do? You can silence the gene of uh, that protein and then hence plant can be protected. So this is how you can genetically modified organisms. Now what organisms can be modified? These can be microbes, these can be plants. These can be fungi and yes, these can be animals as well. So all these type of organisms have been modified so far and yes, they are very much important. Let's see how. Because we are talking about plants, let's see how in plants the genetically modified organisms or genetically modified plants, they have been modified. The first thing is made crops more tolerant to abiotic stress. By genetically modify an uh, organism and especially a crop, you can mate them in a way that they can tolerate the stress, abiotic stress like high salt concentration, high uh, heat, right, more heat. For example, if you have, a, you want to make a plant that can easily grow in desert, you can modify them genetically so that they can survive in high heat, uh, less humidity more salt concentration. So by that plant can easily grow in deserts as well, right? So there are certain plants who can fall off and damage due to hailstorm. What if we add a gene by which the plant get its uh, strength a lot and it does not get damaged by the hailstorms? So that's kind of stress can be, they can be made resistant to them or tolerant to them, right? Reduce reliance on chemical pesticide. Now you can make certain plants which are pest resistant. That means the pest cannot damage them. You have modified the genes in a way. For example, if I say I have a um, plant which is a cotton plant. Now cotton plant is damaged by some insect. What if I modified in a way that when now the insect will come, the insect will die, the plant will not. And this is how we can make our uh, pest resistant plant and there will be less dependence. Reliance means dependence, less dependence on the pesticide. Third is help to reduce post harvest loss. Now you can also modify plants in a way that after you have harvested them, they will not get stale or they will not get damaged or they will not get loss in uh, after their harvesting. For example, tomatoes. You must have seen whenever your mother go to the market to buy tomatoes, you always see, oh, are they red? Are they firm or not? The mother used to press it and say, oh, they are firm, they are red, they are juicy, let's buy them. But sometime what happened, the farmer's land is far away from the market and it takes two or three days for tomatoes to go to, you know, come to the market. So in those two, three days, there are chances that tomatoes, they get damaged they get damaged, right? So they will lose their firm quality. They are not firm enough. They're gooey gooey, right? So what if I genetically modify the tomato and they are firm enough even for a week or so? Then this is also genetically modified and post harvest loss is reduced. What is post harvest loss? The loss that occurs to a plant after you have harvested them, right? 
increase efficiency of mineral uses by plant this prevents early exhaustion of fertility of soil for example if i say now plant is not taking a lot of minerals it it can only use very small amount of mineral and by that it can easily grow then the entire fertility of the soil will be restored for the next crop also okay so by in less mineral uses it has more efficiency so this is what efficiency means that means in less mineral usage it can grow more enhance nutritional value of food example golden rice that is vitamin enriched rice now you can also uh, increase the nutritional value of the food how by adding a gene of vitamin a right and this is how that plant which have gene of vitamin a will be rich in vitamin a if you eat it you will never have vitamin a deficiency so how did we made this golden rice let's see let's talk about its story golden rice so how did we make the golden rice so golden rice are the rice which are vitamin a rich vitamin a rich so there was a problem because there was a problem only then you will find a solution obviously right so what happened the people who were feeding on rice a lot who had the staple food at of uh, who had the staple food as rice these people were showing vitamin a deficiency so there was a need that why not to make these rice rich in vitamin a okay so what's the uh, thing in a vitamin a so we always we never consume vitamin a as such we always consume beta carotene from plants like carrot have beta carotene a lot right so we consume beta carotene which is in the plants and then it goes into our body so in liver in liver this beta carotene is converted into vitamin a into vitamin a so you can never put a gene of vitamin a rather you can put the gene of of beta carotene in your plant so what we did we took a temperate variety of rice we took a temperate variety of rice and the name of that variety is oryza sativa so that's a rice and we had another plant the name of that plant is daffodil the scientific name is narcissus pseudo narcissus this plant is also rich in beta carotene now what we did we took beta carotene gene we took beta carotene gene from this plant and we added this in the oryza sativa with the help of agrobacterium tumefaciens as a vector you all know in plants we usually use this one right ti plasmid so what we did very simple we use this plant daffodil we extracted the beta carotene gene from this plant and we added this in our oryza sativa which is a rice now this oryza sativa which have this beta carotene gene its grain color will be yellow its grain color is yellow why because now it has beta carotene gene due to beta carotene gene fine and hence because its grain color is yellow and it got its name golden rice so we say golden rice are the rice which do not have gold do not have a golden color exactly but a little yellow color appears like a gold and it has the beta carotene gene which later on becomes vitamin a in your body so hence we say golden rice are the kind of high nutrition rice which are rich in vitamin a and this is a very important topic because every year from here the question is asked let's solve a question from this topic okay which of the following is true for golden rice it is vitamin a enrich with a gene from daffodil it is pest resistant with a gene from bacillus thuringiensis it is drought tolerant developed using agrobacterium vector it has yellow grain because of a gene introduced from a primitive variety of rice very simple we'll start from the fourth option 
it does not have a gene from the rice variety no the gene has been added in a rice variety the gene beta carotene has been taken from daffodil this is wrong it's not a drought tolerant first second thing it's not a pest resistant rather it is a vitamin a enriched with a gene which has been taken from daffodil so answer to this question will be one fine next golden rice is genetically modified crop plant where the incorporated gene is meant for biosynthesis of vitamin c omega-3 vitamin a and vitamin b very simple straightforward question what does vitamin um, sorry what does golden rice have beta carotene gene then it can be processed into vitamin a in your body so the answer is three so vitamin a not b not omega-3 not c all right Let's talk about the application of the genetically modified crops in pharmaceuticals. Yes, in pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals and genetically modified crops. The next example that we have is a plant known as Brassica napus, mustard, is producing hirudin. Hirudin produced by brassica brassica is mustard brassica nepis all right so as i've told you the brassica is mustard plant and what mustard plant is secreting hirudin and hirudin is a powerful anticoagulant anticoagulant is something that prevents blood clotting that prevents blood clotting and this hirudin is secreted by a leech the name of the leech is hirudu medicinalis okay so animals are also involved here <laughs> all right so we had a leech that is hirudu medicinalis hirudu medicinalis is a leech and this leech have a gene which is hirudin gene which secretes hirudin okay now we added this gene we added in a plant we added in a plant and what's the name of the plant brassica this brassica napis right once you have added this gene in a plant now imagine this is a plant okay now this plant will definitely produce some seeds these are the seeds now the seeds they contain hirudin they contain hirudin now this hirudin which is in the seeds it was isolated and purified and it is given to the patients injected in patients now which patient needs hirudin there are certain patients who need to be on blood thinners or who have a disorder where they, where they their blood vessels they form clot or there is internal blood clotting so prevent those blood clotting to prevent that excessive clot formation these people these patients they need hirudin which is a powerful anticoagulant that means this is a chemical that prevents blood clotting and this is naturally produced in a leech that is hirudu so we have extracted that gene from that leech added in a plant and plant seed now have hirudin this hirudin is extracted purified and then injected into the patients so that's a kind of a um, application in the pharmaceuticals also now next is let's see the application how have we made the pest resistant plants So what is Bt cotton? So in Bt, Bt stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacterium. Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a soil bacterium. So from here we got the word Bt cotton. What's special about Bt cotton? It's a pest resistant plant. That means a pest cannot destroy this plant. 
If I compare this with a normal cotton plant, the cotton plant can be attacked by a number of insects, but this plant cannot be attacked and killed by any insect. So the, this is a pest resistant plant. So how did we make it and why did we make it? Everywhere, because there is a problem only, then you come with a solution. So what was the problem? The problem was the cotton plant was damaged by insects. This was a problem. Now, what were these insects? These insects, they belong to various groups like Lepidoptera, Coleoptera and Diptera. These are the various orders in the class insecta like we have phylum arthropoda then we have class insecta under class insecta we have orders for example lepidoptera is the order of butterflies coleoptera is the order of beetles and this is the order of flies so this plant can be infected by lepidopterans coleopterans as well as dipterans okay now in lepidoptera we have army worm which is a worm that destroy your cotton plant and ball worm and tobacco worm so these are the worms that can basically destroy your plants so these were the animal enemies of a plant as well as your enemies because they're destroying the cotton plant if you can see this previous diagram in this diagram you can see this is a healthy cotton and this is the one where the balls have been completely destroyed and this is the entire ball that we need and that's the yield of a plant okay if that isn't destroyed everything is will go into vain so the problem is this insect now because if this is your problematic thing let's find its enemy or the one that can kill the insect so that was a bacterium the name of the bacterium was bacillus thuringiensis bacillus thuringiensis a soil bacterium have a gene known as cryogene this cryogene produces a protoxin Protoxin is a kind of inactive toxin. This inactive toxin, whenever it gets alkaline pH, alkaline pH, it gets converted into endotoxin. And this endotoxin is lethal. It can damage your insect. Imagine if somehow this endotoxin is consumed by your insect. If somehow this protoxin enters into the gut of the insect and insect gut have alkaline pH so this will get converted into endotoxin which is the active form of toxin now what this toxin can do this toxin this toxin can destroy the epithelial lining of mid gut of your insect which will lead to lysis that means breakage and damage and your insect can die so this endotoxin what it can do it causes lysis and damage in mid gut of insect in mid gut of insect which cells epithelial cell definitely and now insect will die insect die to more to the insect it uh, damage to the larva more right as comparison to the insect it damages larva more all right so we got to understand yeah this is a thing that can destroy the insect and this was your problem let's find the solution so what scientists did they took a cotton plant a normal cotton plant right second they took cryogene they added this gene in cotton plant and you know what vector will be used agrobacterium so by using agrobacterium tumefaciens this cryogene that has been taken from that has been taken from your bacteria right is added into the cotton plant and cotton plant becomes pest resistant it become pest resistant now if any insect will enter or try to kill this cotton plant try to eat its ball the cry gene is producing the protoxin 
protoxin will enter inside the epithe uh, inside the gut of the insect and the gut will be completely destroyed and the insect will die right but one thing uh, which is very special about this cry gene this cry gene is very specific to the insect this is insect specific and second it is crop specific how let me tell you for example we have gene cry 1 ac cry 2 ab and cry 1 ab like cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab can destroy cotton ball worm and cotton ball worm is a ball worm that destroys cotton so it's plant and it's sex specific whereas cry 1 ab is a gene that can destroy your corn borer right what are these these are insects these are insect so cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab will destroy your cotton ball worm that's a worm that destroy the cotton cotton balls and cry 1 ab will destroy your corn borer the one which infects your corn now here comes ma'am is there any plant bt corn also yes so there are various types of bt plants that have been made apart from cotton we have bt cotton we have bt corn we have bt rice we have bt brinjal we have bt tomato we have bt soya bean bt tomato and in fact we have bt potato as well all these plants have been made but in india we only use bt cotton because all these are edible all these are edible and in india we do not want that anything that is against the nature will come into our food chain so that's why in india it is not at all introduced in india we only have bt cotton that is used at a larger scale and hence it has increased your cotton production as well and this is how we have produced the bt plants let me just uh, explain you one more time so what are bt cotton bt cotton is a pest resistant plant that means that is resistant to the pest that mean the pest or the insect cannot kill this plant the bt cotton right so bt stands for bacillus thuringiensis that's a soil bacterium that is helping us to kill those insect so the problem was the cotton was damaged by these orders of the class insecta and out of this we have like army worm ball worm and tobacco bud worm these worms are the one like ball worm which infects your cotton right now this was your uh, enemy that was destroying your plant but we also have a enemy of this insect that is bacillus thuringiensis a soil bacteria this bacteria produces a toxin it has a gene known as cry gene that gene produces a protoxin protoxin is inactive toxin so toxin which is secreted by bacteria is always inactive that's a plus point because this toxin is inactive that's how it cannot kill the bacteria and it cannot harm us also because to activate this we need alkaline ph and in our gut we have acidic ph first we have acidic ph in the mouth the saliva is 6 having 6 ph around 6 ph and then in stomach we have a very acidic ph by that this toxin can be destroyed so even if it enters into your food chain it cannot destroy you okay so it needs alkaline ph and ph is in the gut of the insect and then it converted into endotoxin this endotoxin will now destroy the mid gut of the insect and hence the insect will die so what we did we took this gene out from this uh, uh, soil bacterium and we put that into our cotton plant and make it bt cotton now this plant has this gene whenever the plant, uh, this uh, 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 this insect will come to eat this plant rather the plant will not be destroyed the insect will be destroyed why because now your plant have a cry gene this gene secretes protoxin when it will enter into the gut gut of the uh, insect that will convert it into endotoxin and that will destroy the gut and insect will die now this gene that we are talking about this gene is very specific this is insect and crop specific it's like if cry 1 ac gene is extracted from this bacterium it can only work against cotton ball worm it cannot work against tomato potato or corn right similarly cry 1 ab can all only be uh, uh, against the corn borer fine 
Apart from that, we have made such kind of BT plant, but in India, only BT cotton is marketed. So this is one of the another important topic, guys. So I hope you have studied it well. So let's solve the question. BT cotton variety that was developed by the introduction of toxin gene of Bacillus thuringiensis is resistant to very simple question: fungal disease, plant nematode, insect predator, insect pest. Yes, Bt, Bt is, yes, pest, resistant to pest, insect pest. What are insect predator? Predator is someone that kills the another organism and predator word is usually for animals, not for plants. Okay, so whenever the pest word is used, that is for plants. Next. That's it. <laughs> so that's it about the agricultural aspects of biotechnology. One uh, agriculture aspect will be doing in the next class and that is also very important because that's a topic that many students don't understand that is RNA interference. So I'll be meeting you in the next class and uh, we'll be discussing all of these other things also. This is also very important chapter C guys. Many of you think, oh no, that's not important, we can do it later, oh, it's a small chapter, but you will definitely see questions from this chapter. So make sure to do it nicely. There are just few topics that are important. Let me tell you what are the very important topics from this chapter. Very important topics. The first important topic is golden rice. Second is BT cotton that we have done. Another is RNA interference that we'll be doing tomorrow. Okay. Then we have insulin production here. Diagnosis. And in the last, you will see there are certain topics like biopatent, bioethics, piracy, all this topic. So these are some of the very, very important topics from uh, this chapter. Right. Even if you are giving CBSC board exams, even then you will see some question from the large, the big questions from this one, uh, like around five marks and so, where you have to write everything, how everything is done. Right. Especially this insulin one. So make sure you also study this chapter very well because many of you don't uh, see it much important, but yes, it has a lot of importance. So that's it about the half part of agriculture. Rest part will be doing in the next class. Till then, bye-bye, take care, work hard.